Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at this 2023 Audi Q5 S Line 45. Huge shout out to Audi North Lake for providing this SUV for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. All that info is down in the description. The Q5 that you see behind me is finished off in glacier white metallic with an MSRP just over $55,000. And we're going to start off today's review with what powers this Q5. Underneath the hood is the 2-liter 4-cylinder turbocharged engine paired to the 7-speed S-Tronic automatic transmission. It pumps out 261 horsepower around 5,000 RPM and 273 pound-feet of torque as low as 1,600 RPM. That power is sent through the Quattro all-wheel drive system. This weighs in right around 4,100 pounds. It will do 0 to 60 in the mid 5-second range with a top speed of 130 miles an hour and it has a fuel capacity of 18 and a half gallons. You'll expect to see around 22 miles per gallon in the city and 29 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 111 inches. Its overall length is 184.3. It has a width of 74 and a half and a height of 65 and a half inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this all new Q5, let's start off with the hexagonal design for the grill. Now the surround on this model is finished off with that dark trim with chrome for the Audi badge right in the middle and this has an integrated forward-facing camera to provide you with that extra visibility as well as having all the parking sensors. Now the cutouts in the grille give this a lot more cooling to that engine and have a nice design to them too. And this model even has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals with a nice housing. I love the split design with that chrome trim piece running right through the middle separating the headlights and the high beams from the turn signals and the DRLs. Now in the corners are sensors as part of the adaptive cruise and all of that technology. More of that brush trim, even a parking sensor and some more black trim. And then this has really nice lines running down the hood. You can see on both sides, it's almost like a stripe with two separate lines running down each side, meeting the top of the grill very nicely, as well as the corner of the headlights, just to tie it in nicely. Now, as we move on to the side, this model has a set of 19 inch wheels. They are eight inches wide with a multi-spoke design, two-tone design to them as well. Matches nicely with this exterior color. This even has body colored side mirrors. They have the integrated turn signal and there's also a camera. So we have a ton of cameras surrounding this model. Up on the roof is the full moon roof as well as the roof racks, which are finished off in that brush trim. Matches nicely with the trim surrounding all of the windows. And there's a very crisp line that goes from the headlights just underneath the side mirrors and above the door handles all the way to the tail lights. Very distinctive for this model. Gray lines in the lower section and I love the indentions for the fender flares both in the front and the rear. Has a good looking side design to it, meeting the rear end very nicely with that glass. And this even has a body colored spoiler with the integrated third brake light. Now the sides are finished off in gloss black to tie in nicely with the window and the wiper blade is in the lower section to help the driver with better visibility. This has a backup camera. All the parking sensors are just underneath those rear reflectors. There's more of that brush trim just above the dual exhaust with some fins in that middle diffuser. This has LED taillights with that sequential design to them, which is great to see for the newer Audi models. And this even has a towing capacity right around 4,400 pounds. So it's very practical, even with the smaller engine that is available. So with the exterior wrapped up, let's move on to the cargo space. I can double tap the button on the key fob or use the button up underneath. And as you can tell right now, these are the additional roof racks that are currently in the rear cargo area. Just to give you reference at how large it is, you can definitely fit a lot of items in the back. Now on this driver's side, there's a cargo light as well as a net, so you can place any items there. There's even another net where you could put items and it has the removable cover so you can hide items as needed. There's another light and net over on the passenger side and you can actually fold down the back seats using these handles on each side. So if I give this a firm pull, it will go down about halfway. You can push it the rest of the way. With all the seats down and the cover removed, there's a lot more interior storage you can use as needed. And then up underneath the floor is the spare tire along with some more hidden storage space if you need to utilize that. And with the power lift gate, you can use the button on the left side to close it. The one on the right side will close and lock it at the same time. So as we move on to these back seats, you can actually use this door handle to lock and unlock the vehicle, which makes it very convenient. Now for the interior on this model, as you can tell, there's a wood trim piece just behind the brushed aluminum release handle. There's even leather on the armrest, more matte black on this grab handle too, which is great to see. It has the upgraded Bang & Olufsen sound system and a little bit of storage space in the back section of that door. And the black leather continues on for these back seats with all the gray stitching to give it a nice look. 
I am five foot ten, so it's time to hop into these back seats. The door sill is pretty low, so it is easy to enter and exit. Now I have the front seat set at my height. I have plenty of room for my feet and my legs. There's also a storage net if you need to utilize those. Right in the middle are two air vents, along with the temperature adjustments and some auxiliaries so that we can charge electronics as the backseat passenger. And then as far as headroom goes at five foot 10, I have about an inch or so above my head. Now the release on the side will recline this slightly, giving me a little bit of an additional headroom. So it's very comfortable for the size of this SUV to have three people in the back of this, which is of course great. Now, right in the middle, we have the armrest. So just by pulling on this, I can fold that down. It also reveals two cup holders. So if you need to use those, you have that additional space. And like I mentioned earlier with the split, I can push on that right next to the headrest and lower that middle section. If you have some longer items and you need to place them through, makes it a lot more practical for this size of this SUV. Now, as far as visibility goes, a little bit of a pillar right there, but there is a ton of glass to provide a lot of visibility for your backseat passengers as well as your driver of course and with the full moonroof the touch sensitive dome lights are up on the sides along with the grab handles there's even a hook there where you could place some clothes or other items like that now as we move on to these front seats the door panels finish off just like the rear with the addition of all of the window controls the side mirror adjustments these are power folding and heated there's the memory seating adjustments, brushed aluminum on that release handle, same trim for the grab handle, even the lift gate release, and a little bit of storage space on the back side. And we have these same black leather seats with a really nice design to them. I love how simple they are, yet they have a good look. They are also automatic, so all those adjustments are down on the side. And as we hop into it, just as easy to hop into the front as the back. Looking at the steering wheel now, it's completely covered in solid black leather with black stitching. There's some brush trim pieces in the lower section to give it a really nice look. Now over on this right side is Bluetooth and voice commands. There's the heated steering wheel control, volume and tuning for the radio. On this left side, all of these are for the digital gauge cluster, which we'll come back to. This even has the cruise control, adaptive cruise control settings on the stock to the left. And it even has steering wheel mounted paddle shifters finished off in that gloss black. But let's fire this Q5 up with my foot on the brake. That button is over on the right side and we can bring this to life. And as we look at this virtual cockpit, on the left side is the tack, on the right side is the miles per hour, and then right in the middle, you can go through a lot more information using those arrows over on that left side. So currently it's showing date and time. If I scroll down, there's fuel consumption to monitor. There's even the short-term and long-term memory. You can pull up the energy consumer so you can monitor all that information, along with the driver assistance, even look at traffic signs. Now, if I scroll over, there's any messages that may appear along with music. You can look at your phone when you have that paired and then even pull up the navigation. Now, what I love about the virtual cockpits in all of the Audis is I can click on this view button now and completely change how this looks. So now we have the navigation in full screen with the other dials minimized now. So if you have the nav on, you can view that in full screen and then you can still go through the rest of this information in a larger screen if you'd like to see it that way. So just depending on what you're using and what you'd like to see, very cool to see that adjustment. Now, as we move over to the left side of the steering wheel, this is all the headlight controls. There's even some more lighting controls, a dimmer switch for the gauges, and a little bit of storage space underneath that. You could place in some bigger items down there. It definitely has a lot of additional space. There's more of that wood trim along with one air vent. And then as we move on to the middle screen now, this is a touchscreen system, has a lot of good info to go through. Currently on the home screen, you can see all these icons like messages, there's weather and news. If I swipe over, we can go into favorites, navigation, phone, audio, all of those icons, of course. If I go into vehicle now, you can actually go through the different driving modes. So this has off-road, comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual, depending on how you're driving this. You can go through the parking aids, go into the seats so you can adjust those if you need to. There's even the lighting and the visibility, AC controls too. Now, if I go back to home, there's even one more here on this screen that has the triple split design. So there's the radio, phone, and navigation. So you can have all of them on at the same time. And on this left side, these are all presets basically. So just by pushing on the home dial, it will go back to this screen here. There's also music to click on, your Sirius XM, all of that information, your normal audio that you can pair your phone to. There's even your phone and then pulling up the navigation in full screen. So it's great to have all of that usable information right in the middle. And just underneath that, there are two air vents along with the hazard button. There's more of that wood trim going all the way to the passenger side. 
and right in the middle we do have all the AC controls. So in the middle with all the brushed aluminum toggles, you can actually hover your finger on these to see which way you need to push the button in order to activate what you're looking for. So you can go to the rear, you can have your max AC on or off. So that's great, you don't have to guess going up or down. Fan speed is right in the middle, you can sync these, you have where you'd like the air to go on both sides, and then the dial for driver and passenger are on each side of that. There's some more controls right in the middle, even the heated seat controls are on the far ends. And then underneath that, there is a shortcut to the drive select. So like I mentioned earlier with the different driving modes, you can quickly get to those. There's the engine start stop feature along with traction control, the parking sensors. There's a downhill assist control. You can even turn that upper screen completely off if you'd like to. So if you want it more calm screen, you can do that. You can tap on that button or the screen to bring that back to life. And then at the very bottom is a small compartment where you could place your phone if you need to. There's some auxiliaries on that right side so you could charge them. More of that wood trim leads all the way to the power and volume knob for the radio. A little bit of storage space behind that where you could put your phone sideways. Right in front of the shifter is some piano black along with some more additional storage space. And with this leather wrap shifter, just by pushing the release on this left side and pushing this forwards, that is for reverse where we now have the 3D camera system that I mentioned earlier. So there are a ton of views depending on what you need to see around you. There's also the top down view and we have all of these angles to really give you a good perspective around the entire vehicle, even showing you where the front and the rear tires are to give you a little bit better visibility. So it's awesome to see that. There's some other settings that you can go into. You can even just pull up the sensors and have that info on the left side if you'd like to. Now, if I put this vehicle into drive and then I pop it to the right, that is the manual setting. That allows you to use these steering wheel mounted paddle shifters if you need to. And then park is on the back side. If you are in the manual setting, it will automatically go into park for you. Now the electronic parking brake is just behind that. There's also two cup holders right in the middle. And as you just saw with the center armrest, you can slide that forwards and backwards depending on your comfort. And if you have drinks that you need to place in front of that. If I open this up now, there is an auxiliary on the back side, so you can charge electronics if you need to. And this also locks in several different positions. So I can't push it down right now unless I go all the way up. So if you need a little bit more comfort with it up, forwards or backwards, it is nice to see that. Now over on this passenger side is the glove box with plenty of room for all of that information. A Little bit of a storage shelf up top if you have some smaller items. There's the Quattro badge as well. We'll take another look at this interior. And as I mentioned earlier, with the full moonroof, that control is up in the middle. So if I just push on that dial, you can also open up the sunroof at the same time if you'd like to. That will go all the way back to the headrest and the back seats. If you push on it one more time there to get it going all the way, and it provides you with a lot of light as well as having that sunroof open. Now also up top are some call buttons on the back side. There's also the touch sensitive dome lights. We have the sunroof adjustments as you just saw and even a frameless rear view mirror. All right, so as we get this 2023 Audi Q5 out on the road, this is a very nice SUV, especially for being more of the baseline trim level for the Q5. So we have the smaller engine, we still have some nice features and technology for this. As you've already seen with the 3D camera system, all these materials on the inside gives it a really nice look for this price point. So you're getting a very practical SUV. You even have different driving modes. If you need to take this off road, if you wanna drive a little bit more spiritedly with this or just put it into the comfort setting, you have a lot of different options. I think it's a pretty good sized SUV too. Plenty of room for your backseat passengers, even plenty of room in that cargo area. So if you needed this as your only vehicle, you were looking for an SUV, you didn't want to spend a whole lot of money, but you still wanted all of these nice creature comforts, this is a great option. And as far as driving it out on the road, it's been pretty smooth so far. Now I'm not driving this as far as I would normally drive for a test drive, but I've been in the Q5 before and I love how they drive. It's very quiet, very smooth. This would make for a great daily driver, especially over bumps like that. It's what you would expect. And uh, I am a big fan of Audi. I own an Audi myself. I'm not too biased towards them, but I do like how the interiors are. Nothing is cheap feeling. I will say that the placement of the screen is a little bit odd. Maybe not everybody would like that kind of floating design to it. I do kind of miss some of the older Audis had the screen where it could actually hide in the dash. 
it'd be cool to see if Audi brought that back just to hide it when you don't need to use it because I believe that you can still listen to the music and some other features like that with it hidden. So it would be kind of cool to have that option rather than it just sticking there. What I love about Audi is they don't go overboard. You get everything that you need. It still has that cool uh, digital layout and screen but you don't have a million different settings to go through because let's face it, you're just going to be setting them, forgetting about it, and get it the way that you like and move on from there. And now as we switch over to the POV angle for this Q5, let's talk about the visibility from the driver's seat. So over this shoulder, even with that pillar in the back, it's not really that bulky. So you do have a good 360 degree view without using that camera system. And now we'll pop it into the manual setting, so that way we can use these paddle shifters. I won't be able to go too quick for today, but like I mentioned earlier, I've been in the Q5, and even with the smaller engine, it still has good get up and go to it. So we'll just give it a small acceleration, very mild here. And just like that, we're up to speed. It's not a loud car, so if you're not looking for a loud SUV, definitely very quiet, but I don't feel like it's underpowered for its weight. We'll do another quick acceleration once we go around this cul-de-sac here. But I love that you have the paddle shifters. They are very responsive, so you could use them when you need to. And it's just a very nice SUV for the price. We also have a very, very tight turning radius very impressive so it's going to be very nimble in parking lot situations and as we get up to speed just like that without even thinking for the two liter turbo definitely impressive but I love being in the driver's seat of the Q5 a lot of awesome features for the price but I think that's gonna wrap it up for this walk around review and test drive behind the wheel of the all-new 2023 Audi Q5 once again, huge shout out to Audi Northlake for providing this SUV for me today. Make sure you check out their website. All that info is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.